type this thing, it's and you click on install below, it's going to enable multi sites for you. But I'm not going to use that method. Um, I'm not going to use that method because I want to show you how you can do it for an existing WordPress installation. So I'll just I'll just click on install here and I'll wait for it to install. So it's coming up. So now it has successfully installed. So this is what we have. So this is the current admin panel. So this is what we have right now. So what I would do is that uh, from my slide right here, you're able to see that I said that you should just add the following code, define WP allow true to your, what to your WP config file. So I'll just copy the code. Once I copy it, uh, so this is the default WordPress dashboard, as you all know. So I come here, go to your file manager of your host. Go to the file manager of your hosting. Uh, I'm going to look for it. This is it here. It took out the TK. Uh, and uh, of course, I would now enter the, I'll look for the WP config file. So this is it here. Edit. Now it's just one line of code. So I come right here. Um, I add it below this thing. Just before the dash all stop editing, happy blogging. I add it there. So it says WP allow site comma true. So the code that you are supposed to add is already list is already written for you inside the site. So I want a safe changes. So now that my change has been saved, I can reload my dashboard again. That's my admin dashboard. Now, if I go to my if I go back to my admin that you know I've reloaded it. So yeah, now I can see tools, network setup. This particular thing was not there before, but because of the new thing I added now, it's going to allow, ask me to do network setup. And here, so once I click on network setup, I see this. Uh, it creates a network of WordPress sites. Welcome to the network installation process. Fill in the information below, and you'll be on your way to creating a network of sites. So they will help me create a configuration file in the next step. Now look, at, listen. At this particular point in time, you can decide to choose either a subdomain or a subdirectory. For the first one, a subdomain. A subdomain will look like site1.geektutor.tk, they will put it here, or subdirectory will look like geektutor.tk slash site1 and site2. So what I would do is that um, I'll pick subdirectory. Just personal opinion right now. But uh, most times, you need to use a subdomain. Now, let me explain something. If you are using a subdomain, so if you are using a subdomain, they said you will need a wildcard DNS record. So what that means is that from your C panel right here, uh, let me show you. From your C panel right here, you would have to go to add-on domain. Uh, no, not, not add on domain. There is not add on domain. You have to go to. You have to go to subdomain. And under subdomain, you have to put a start. So inside there, you have just star and dot dot tk. So you have dot star, star, and then you select your domain name. And when you create, it's going to create a wildcard domain for you. So what, can, what, what that particular thing does is that it allows you to map your 
website because if, if they are using a subdomain install, uh, you know, they, before when uh, well, the way this thing works on the technical level, on the technical level is that it uses Apache mode right to be direct and control the URLs. So you need essentially to do this if you are using a subdomain. So you just put star, normal star in this particular subdomain field, you select your domain name, and once you create, it works. And that's, that's as simple as that. But I'm going to use a subdirectory, and then I'm going to stop. So once I click on install, it says this, I should add this particular code to my what? To my WP config file. It's very explanatory. So I copy it. I go to my WP config that is still open. Below that, I'll stop edit. I paste it inside and I save changes. It also says in instruction number two, I should go to my HTSS file and put this thing inside. I should replace everything there right now with this thing. So I go to my HTSS file, which is right here. I edit it, I open it up, and then I replace. So two things I did. The first thing is I added a defined WordPress. I added this line, define WP allow multi-site true. I added it first to my WP config file, and then I go to tools, then network, and I'm able to see, select the type of installation that I want, and it asks me to add this code. So let me save this one right here. Uh, this one. So once they are saved, I would, so I would have to what? Log in again. So let me reload it. It asks me to log in again. So I think our username is admin, password is WordCamp, Mombasa, and then I log in. So now, if you can see right now, you can see that now that the, everything looks a little different. Yeah, now you see network admin. That means you are in the network admin of the whole network. Here you see my site. So this is where, so uh, here is like, so under network admin, I can come here and click on. So this is the dashboard of the whole website itself. It tells me I have one site to create a new user. It tells me site users, themes, plugins, settings. So now let me uh, let me. So that's essentially how they, they install a WordPress multi site. We just installed one. So let's create a sub site. So as you know, to create a sub site like this for the pk slash one. So uh, one gig tutor, admin email, same email. So what, what this thing does is that, uh, so on that new site, uh, another advantage of multi-site is that on that new site, you can use set of things that you like, you can use another team that you like, you can use another, pro they don't have to look the same, they can look very different, but people won't know that it is one website. So now I can go to the admin of that one, tk slash one slash WP admin and you are back to the normal WordPress admin. Now, and you are back to the normal WordPress admin screen of that website. Now, one thing that you need to know, so let's do, let's do something. Let's explain the whole network setting. Let me explain some of the things that are there for you right now. So if you wanted to add a new site, you do it from site, add new. If you want to add new users, you do it from new users. New users are there. So from here, you can see all the users on your WordPress website. So if somebody is registered on site A, it does not mean they can log in on site B. This is where you set everything. And uh, install team, uh, look at something. If a team is not network enabled, now under install, install team, you are going to see something called network enabled. If a team is not what network enabled, you will not be able to, you will not be able to see, you will not be able to see because your subset. So for example, here, yeah, I have TV there 2015, 2017, 2016. 
But in the admin dashboard of the first site that I created, I can only see one thing, 2017. Why is it that? Because only 2017, there's what? Network enabled. So, for instance, if you want to use a tip on another subsite, you would install it from the network admin. But when you install it from the network admin, you would have to network enable it so that you can be able to select the team on that particular subsite. Yes. So I, I, I let me delete this one. So let me add a new team. Okay. That is okay. It's done. Let's try and add a new team. So uh, uh, let me just add this one, Maxwell. So I'm installing Maxwell and playing. So you can see what I'm really talking about. So once I installed it too, I can go back to my install team list. Now, I'm going to network enable Maxwell, but I will not network enable play. So if I reload the team page of the first one, I can see what? Maxwell right here. Why? Because Maxwell and 2017, both of them are network enabled. But because plane is not network enabled, I'm not able to see it. So I can, I can change my team. I can activate Maxwell. So on the main site, this one, this is the main site, the main gig tutor.tk. I'm seeing the normal 2017 default thing. But on the subsite one, I am seeing another team entirely. So this one means that you can use different team on, on the same, on, uh, on basically the same WordPress installation and gives you the, the liberty. So I can close this one here. I can close this one here. So let's say sometimes in one to three years uh, and you decide that you want to change the setup, say six months, what you can just do is you have to just come to network setup right here. Now look at something. For subdomain, in this particular second line, it says define subdomain install is what? False. So this one was the one that, that because I'm choosing subdirectory. So that's why it is false. As the mean you wanted to change the subdomain, you have to change this one to true, and then you have to migrate all your content bit by bit to a sub domain install. Yes. So this is where you can see. Uh, so say for instance, you, you forgot to copy something and you need to copy it, or you need to jot this down. This is where you can copy it and write it down somewhere so for network setting here yeah, you can change the title of the whole website on the network so you know when, when you create a new site on wordpress.com that is essentially wordpress or my wordpress site so here you can set something like that here you can set the whole admin of the whole wordpress here you can allow user registration so it says something you want to create an instance like like we have for like edublog does so edublog edublog when you go to edit blog, you can create an educational site. So say you want to do something like that for Kenya, you can do it from here and allow user registration. So when you allow user registration, it means that you can allow new people to create their own particular website. And when you allow people to create their own particular website, so you are essentially giving them the power that WordPress.com gives them. So it just, it just boils down to the limit of your thinking or the limit of what you want to achieve so you can allow them to create new sites uh, you can allow you can just network enable some teams so they can choose from different teams or you can even uh, enhance it more that you, you plugins which i will get to in some few minutes so yeah you yeah is all the setting of the website the reason why these names are banned is so that of course you don't want somebody to go and if they are using a subdomain you don't want somebody to go and buy www your website because uh, that one should 
originally go to the main website. So you do you don't want somebody to buy that. You don't want someone to buy web root admin. So any names you don't want anybody to buy, you you or to use. You ban it from here using ban names. You can limit some emails and not allow them to get this. Yeah. Uh, also, if you want to limit registration to certain domain names, so for example, say you you want them to only buy domain names from you, and once they buy it, you want them to be only able to register. So say your your client wants you to create a site for them, you can ask them to buy a domain name or buy from somewhere, and you can allow them give them the access to create their site by adding their domain here. Yeah, you can buy you can ban domains from here and here you can manage the new site email the welcome mail that goes to them the first post that that shows and you can change all the sets you can even set the maximum file upload size for new people that come and so one particular important thing is that for normal ad for normal site administrators they will not be able to see these plugins so if you that I, if you can may this where is it? I need to show okay, not, not this. Okay, so let's try and go to the back end. Now for the plugin is showing here because I'm and I'm I'm a I'm the old administrator of all the websites on the panel. So uh, you can have a network administrator that be able to like it's called a super admin. It can assess everything on the website but yeah uh, if somebody is just a normal administrator they will not be able to see the plugin menu but if i tick it here you're able to see the plugin menu i'm able to make changes to plugins so let's talk about plugins plugins are a little different let, let me explain why you can network activate a plugin and network activating a plugin it means that it, it once you install a website once you create a new website that plugin is by default activated so you know i i mentioned a case study of those my clients there was this particular plugin that was handling the the way these pages were built for them at that particular point in time so what i did was that once they created a new website i, I network activated that plugin from here so once they created it the plugin was already, was already activated they just have to go to settings and then set it up the way they want it to look like. They don't have to do any other thing. The plugin is just activated. So, but for plugins, if you don't get to activate them, if you enable the administration menu, somebody can still come here. They come to plugin and then activate them. But if you network activate, it will already be activated. And you can, you can upload your plugin from, from this one you able to add a plugin, but from here, you're able to add all the plugins that you need and all the plugins that you want. So what the kind of setup WordPress.com does is, of course, it's a little bit enhanced. They, they, they wrote some code, but what they did is just that they basically enabled all the plugins that we had in WordPress.com plugin directory, WordPress.org plugin directory, and open them up so you can be able to see uh, what they did is they did not enable the plugin menu you know that's what they did right but for for team you're able to see all of them and able to search for them so this is essentially what they did so what is, what, there are some plugins that I, that you can use to enhance your wordpress multi-site so this one was the, uh, this is what i explained you, you can find tools, network setup. The uh, plugin must be disabled to use WordPress multi site. So, for instance, this statement means if you were already using your website before and you now want to switch to WordPress multi site, simple. Then you add this line of code to your WP config site and you log into your, to your admin panel. It tells you that you have to disable WordPress multi site. And it also tells you the code to add to your HTSS and your wp config.php file. 
So, and then, of course, this is just the whole installation process that I went through just now. So, as you can see, our WordPress site did not export now. So, uh, installing WordPress multi site does not have to be hard. So, let me just play with some here and install. Let's create another website. So, let's say we are creating another website, TWO2. Site title two. Okay, and we do this. So it means that we already we now have three sites. So here I can see all the sites. I can see site one, site two, site three. Let me do. Let me let me add a plugin for you that will show you how you can map, how you can connect a domain name like abc.com to a subdomain for you. Uh, and uh, I may have, I, I did not buy any extra domain names this morning, so I may not be able to finish the setup for you, but you'll be able to see how you can do it by yourself. So in my list of recommended plugins, I have a plugin called WordPress MU, I think. Okay, yes, this is it. WordPress MU domain mapping. So it says the description is to map any domain or site on a WordPress MU to an external domain. So I click on install now. And then I network activate it. So now I can come here. I can see the settings called domain mapping. So the first thing that it asks me to do is that it says, please copy sunrise.php home slash system. Now listen, this one, it's not, it's not as if it's something add, that like add to this, just like, I'll look for this directory. So, Inside the plugin, let's come. Let, this is my admin. This is my file manager. WP admin plugin. This is the plugin here. WP domain mapping. So now this is the songize.php that it is mentioned here. Songize.php. So it says I should copy to this particular directory to the root of my WP content folder. So I come here. I click on it. I click on copy and then so this is the root and I copy file. So it, 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 it's essentially like that. And then if I go back up one level, up one level, I can see sunrise.php here. Now they also mentioned another thing. They, they said ensure the sunrise definition is in my WP config file. So if I reload it here, now. It just said, please don't comment online. Define sunrise, mode. you know, because I've done the first step, so it removed that one. It's telling me that please uncomment the line, define on, or add it to your own dial to your WP config. So I go to my WP config. Um, where is it? This one right here. WP config. And then I click on edit. So I I come down. Now I can't find sunrise settings. So they said I should what add it. So or add to find sunrise on. So I come here. I come back here and then I add it. So as you can see, I just added whatever code I'm adding, I'm adding it above that's all stop editing so and then i save my file so once i save it then i reload this thing so you see it opens up the it creates the domain mapping table for me 
So now what this will do is that it allows you to, like I said, point a domain name to this place. So it's essentially simple. So I really have done that. It says, as a super admin on this network, you can set the IP address, users need to point their DNS A record at. If you don't know what the IP address is, ping this block to get. So for every server, that's an IP address. So for me now, it will be geektutor.tk. That's enough. The domain name is actually your IP address. So it's saying that So it says, if you prefer to use a CNAME record, so you can either decide to use IP address method or a CNAME record. You know, your IP address is like 654 or 80.8.82, .8 something like that, depending on where you are hosting at. If you prefer to use a CNAME record, you can set the domain here. This domain must be configured with a record or a name pointing at an IT address. So, yeah, I can set a CNAME domain name and uh, it's just about getting the bytes. So you have a domain, put it in, IP address, put it here. And these are the options that I have. Permanent, we says permanent redirect is better for your blogger's page rank. And so I can save. So once I save, I can come to settings. So when a domain is is mapped. So for this site ID, let me show you how you can get your site ID. Or you can even search here. Okay, yeah, from your site. Now, if you click on this dashboard, no. now look at something. When I over, over the name of the website, I can see here wpgitstore.tk slash wp admin slash network site site info i dot php i on i question mark id is equals to two you know there's a place called i can't if i take my mouse away from it okay look at this side the thing is going to appear right here so from here you can see it here so id two so that's where you see your id but this one is what id three this one is id one so subsequent sites that you had they will have an id so you can just come to the main so once you know the ID, like I know ID one, you can add a domain name to it, geekman. Dot, and once you save it, it is, it is going to it's go somewhere. Wherever it goes to geekman, it takes them to geektutor.tk forward slash one, and that's essentially what domain mapping does. For you. It allows you to map your domain. So the other plugins that I recommend is, is you can use a, a plugin called multi-site content copier. So say you want to copy, you want to copy names, no, not names, you want to copy pages, you want to copy posts, you want to copy them for, so say for instance, if all your websites basically have the same type of pages and same type of posts. So you can just copy them. You just you just, you just need the ID. Once you install the plugin, the way I showed you how to install the plugin, you can just copy them, and immediately they begin to copy. Uh, for the default theme plugin that I mentioned here, what that one does is that, and how it particularly helps me, that it allows you set a default. So the way once you install a new WordPress site, it set 2017 as the default theme. So that way, that, that's essentially what you are doing. So whenever somebody creates a new site, you can use that team to set a particularly default team for them. Say a team you bought or a team you saw in the repository that you like and you want your subsite to have. You can set it and you'll be fine. And uh, of course, either you use this one for domain mapping or use this one for domain mapping. Both of them, they do basically the same thing. But at the time, I was having issue with this one, but this one has never let me down. Uh, in, in a long time, and that's when I've been using it. So, uh, multi site examples we have EduBlogs, we have BBC America, and all that. So, that's about it. Uh, that's, that's what that's the power of WordPress multi site. It, it allows you to, to create, to think outside of the box and create something amazing. 
So I have a special prize for, but before that, I want to take questions. So if you have questions, let me check. Okay, so the first question I have here is, can you please go back and show us the advantage of using multi-site? Okay, awesome. Let me, let me go right there. So the advantage of using multi-site, once again, is number one, it allows you to have many websites on one WordPress installation. So as you can see now, uh, what I just did is I just created essentially two different web three websites. So the main gitutor.tk uh, from right here. The main gitutor.tk, the main gitutor.tk slash Mondas and that website with its own admin dashboard and the last one gitutor.tk.2. If I was using domain mapping, I can make I, I can edit right here. I make it let me just try it. So as even I've mapped, so once I map the domain, I can change it here to gitman.com. Of course, it will work now because the domain is not mapped. But if I come to all sites, you can see that here you have git here you have gitman.com, here you have this. So what what multi site does for you is that it allows you to integrate it with the, the different issues or different problems that you have. The second thing is it allows you to run things as subdomain, subdirectory, or even TLDs. So your different site it gives you the power for you to choose whether you want subdomain, whether you want subdirectory, or whether you even want to use a .com, a .net, a .me, a .io, or whatever. And it allows you to manage an object website at once. So from this place here, right here, dashboard, updates. If there was a, an update to a plugin, from here, I can update all the old plugins on the website and all the teams on the website. And even from here, I can upgrade my own network. So it's going to upgrade all the sites on the, on the website for me, like it just said, all done. So what it does for you is that, if instead of you having to log into one site one by one, upload the updating team, updating plugin, you can do all of that from one particular dashboard and you'll be fine. Uh, it, and also said, it makes your development workflow easier for you so you can it makes it as look at the way uh, i can so now it makes me able to manage two three work four websites at once and i'm right now i'm going to show you a live example of something that i use to a live example that, that is a multi-site and it allows you to scale your business to another way yes it gives you the, the ability to scale your business to another way so I, i've answered that So somebody is asking, when you use WordPress multi-site, does it affect your site performance? Hence, affect your site, your automatic plan? Okay, so let me explain something to you. Uh, for site performance, really, uh, when we are talking about multi-site, uh, um, okay, I don't want to try and sell it. <laughs> but for site performance, uh, multi-site, uh, the same this is that if, if you are if to have, you know, on a web, on a C panel now, you can decide to have add-on domains and all that. So you can decide to have add-on domains and install WordPress differently on them. It uses uh, basically the same disk space as that. Okay, let me just confirm that since we are live. So let's check as git. As git. Okay, let's wait for it to come up. So I'm checking a C panel of of a site that I have a multi site on it to see what this space it has used. Okay, so I, yeah, I can see that the old disk usage that I have used is 3.29 gigabytes, and on this particular C panel, I have I have three multi sites on it. Yes, three different multi sites. And uh, under the three different multi sites, I think uh, the minimum has 25 websites inside of it. So, uh, from you can see, this is just 3.29 gig. If I were to have, and this one does not, it does uh, this 3.29 gig counts into account all the other experiments that I've done, like all the other websites that I have 
under that particular thing. So what this means is that though they are, they are, they are assuming you wanted to create a multi-site hosting, that's another, con that's another conversation entirely. Because one of the things I advise is get a, if we're scaling up to a large level, you can get a VPS. Now in the VPS, use Apache but an engine. So you can use Apache to, because of the module right feature. Of course, multi-site will not work well if there's no module right. So you can use Apache for that. And then uh, you can use NGINX for catching and all those stuff. But, but really, if, if, if it's just a normal, say, 100, 150 sites, or 200 sites, or 300 sites, you can just use a normal panel host. Be sure of how many data space I have. My own, my own data space are limited. So, even, so I guess if you have 10 gigabytes of hosting, it should be enough for you. So my own is unlimited, so it pretty much works for me. But they have 10 gigabytes of this space. That's fine. And it, it will do it for you. And then it, it, it will not affect the performance. Because the thing is, the, because of the, if your cPanel is working, if your website is up and your host is, has a good uptime, people would not know. Uh, so essentially what happens is if a site is down, that's, that's actually an advantage. If a network is down, the whole of the network is going to go down. That's the reality. If, if, so the whole of the network is going to go down. But what you can do to restore against that, to work against that, is that ensure that number one, you are using a hosting platform that is reliable, as gives you bandwidth, gives you unlimited, gives you probably 10 gig or 20 gig of disk space. Uh, reason being that in case you exceed more than 3.9 giga as I've used. And at this one, oh, this hosting has been running for like two or three years now. Um, so in case you exceed it, you know that yes, you can always increase your, your disk space and all that. And, but, and if the hosting uptime is good, you will have a problem with your site down because that's the only thing that can take your site down. If the hosting uptime is, if somebody makes a mistake on one side, it won't affect the other side, yes. So if I, if, I, if, I, if I change a plugin on one side, I change the setting of a plugin on one side, no, it's not going to affect the, change, the setting of the plugin on the other side. So if I change the setting of the plugin on the whole big admin panel, this, this one, this whole, this main admin panel, the whole website admin panel, that's what it's going to affect. But if I don't, neither. It's not going to affect it and it's going to be fine. So I guess that's about it. So get a good hosting package, fine. How can this benefit a small business? So for you to benefit a small scale business, so let's, let's use an example of myself. I, I am an hosting company. Let me even show you this real quick. So let's say I go to Ask Gibbet website. So this is one of the multi-sites that I have. So now, as you can see right here, I have all these subsites. As you can see, all of them, they are different domain names. All of them are subsites right here. All of them, they are subsites. And it still continues on the other page. All of them are subsites for teams. So what I did, so here I have that is there, Pretty Key, Jessica, Genesis and then I didn't enable network enable Genesis. Why? Because uh, if the framework is already there, you know, Genesis is a framework. If the framework is already there, so there was no need to network enable it. For my plugin, I'm just using I'm using default team. The reason I'm using default team is so I can set a new default team, like I mentioned. I'm using duplicate post so I can clone posts and pages. I'm using easy forms for MailChimp because those clients on this particular one, they want MailChimp integration. I'm using Genesis Connect for WooCommerce. I'm using Genesis Extender. Uh, this one, InstaBuilder and InstaBuilder. Now, let me tell you the reason why we have this. This normal InstaBuilder is the normal InstaBuilder that you can enable on your website. And this InstaBuilder is because a one particular person on this whole hosting wanted a customized InstaBuilder. So what I did was I created a fourth version for her, named it another name, and gave only her the access to this one. So the rest, they won't see this interview. It's only that we see. That's why you can say it's not network activated. 
and here you can see media tools. I'm using news one to migrate images from one place to another. Here is multi-site content copier to copy content in the same network. And yes, that's essentially so, so from this multi-site content copier, let me just quickly show you how it works. I can choose the type of content I want to copy. I press next step. I choose the source where it's coming from. So I can choose either blog ID or come here. So I can select the site URL. Then I press next step. I select all the things I want to copy. So once I select it, and I select the destination, and then it's copied for me, and then it allows me to just do my thing once and for all. So for, for how it can help you as a small business, what multi-site can do, say you are a small business that is just starting out, and you want to your client. So what this thing does for me, another important advantage is that all of the sites on this thing, on this particular hosting, they are on a retainer. So they are paying me a yearly fee for me to manage this website for them, for me to renew their domain name and all that. So you can put them on a yearly retainer and then, okay, so, so you can, and it can allow you to create small, small hosting packages. So instead of you just creating a website and allowing them to, and, and charging them a whole lot of money that they don't have, you can instead put them on a multi site and charge them like a monthly fee. So by the time they finish paying for a year, they would have paid for your cost and you'll be even having new money coming into your own business every month. For me, what I do is not monthly, I do yearly. So every year, uh, so because here yeah, I, can, I can track when I created the site. So I know when you join the network. So I, regularly, you can, I, can know, I can know, okay, this is when your money is due. Please come and pay your money and all that. And you can also automate all this process to send emails out to them once their website is after a year anniversary and all that. Um, I've, not, I've, not, I've not done that before, but I guess something like that should exist. So uh, this, these are some of the options I can do. Please, can you highlight some of the disadvantages of multi-site? Okay, so you want some of the disadvantages of multi-site. So, but one disadvantage of multi-site, I'm really that I don't... So essentially, a multi-site is not for you. Uh, number one, the advantage of multi -site. So a multi-site is not for you because the way WordPress table works is that once you have, you, you WordPress sort tables for you. So multi-site allows you, it does not want to be the advantage that, and it's a feature that can be built in, but it's not there yet. Is that For WooCommerce, uh, using WooCommerce for multi-site, they don't share the same table. So you can't like stop for using multi-site work for you. No, it will never work. Uh, but you, it will work, but all the software will be different. So you have to find a way to make them fit each other. Uh, the, the advantage of multi-site is that if, if, one site, if, if, your, if your network is down, all the sites of the network is down. So if you have 100 sites, all the sites are down. So, and... Um, or for also for security wise, if something for security wise, if something happens to your how's it called? If something uh, for security wise, somebody enters into your main account, uh, essentially all the sites on the account they can be they can be what's it called? They can be compromised. So that those are disadvantages of multi site and. And if you, well, of course, you can, you can reduce that. So those are essentially the advantage of the multi-site. And also, if your server does not have the necessary server requirements. So if you go to that link, there you can see the server requirement right there. You forgot your account password, how can you recover it? Just use the forgot password, and then you are going to recover it. So before I go, my time is up. What you can do is that I have a free gift, my contact on Twitter. Please take pictures. 
Send them to me on Twitter at Geek to Come. My Facebook is Sadiq Akin Habi. My email is geek at adriasocial.com. And my website is geektutor.co. So you can win a copy of the Geek plugin book. So tweet at me. Tweet multi-site is not scary. So if you tweet multi-site is not scary, tweet it at Geek Tutor. I will select some random.